In this presentation, we want to discuss the use of bank feeds within our accounting software. Let's go with Zero. Here we are in the demo company dashboard. We're going to go over to the accounting dropdown. I'm going to go to the bank accounts. Now we're not going to set up the bank accounts or go through the bank feeds at this point in time. We just want to point out what the bank feeds are. And then at a later point in time, we'll have a whole section just on the bank feed. So if you want to jump down there, you can. However, uh, if you're new to accounting software, you don't have a good grasp about the accounting process. We highly recommend you go through the other processes first and then go into the bank feeds. Why? Because oftentimes if you're, if you're just setting up the accounting system uh, and then you decide just to connect to the bank, which is what the bank feeds are, basically we can actually take our books, connect them to the bank and download or upload the information directly from the bank into our accounting system. However, if we were to do that, let's imagine we did that for an entire year's worth of data, then we would have a whole lot of data in our accounting system and if we didn't know how to basically apply that out, uh, we didn't know how the accounting system worked, then we would probably be, pre be really overwhelmed with all that kind of data. We wouldn't really know what to do with it at that point in time. We could very easily be putting things in there, double entering things or not entering things, deleting things and, and having a problem with it. So you can imagine the bank feeds kind of happening like this. If you have the bank accounts separate, you have all the banking transactions that cleared your bank account. You can kind of think of your bank statement and taking that bank statement and then just putting it into your accounting system. You can kind of imagine that. However, when you put it into the accounting system, it typically then goes into kind of a limbo system in accounting. It's not quite, it's not approved yet. These transactions are not just approved. You just have all that data hanging out there. Then you have to go in and basically assign out the accounts and approve where they're going to go in the system. How are you going to do that process? Well, the, the only way you can do that is basically understand some concept of what the accounting cycle is so you can take those transactions and properly assign them uh, somewhere into the system. So we'll talk more about how that will work at, at a later time. So we're first going to think about a full service accrual accounting system and then think about the bank feeds and when that might uh, feed in well. Now, where the bank feeds make it really easy, where, where they fit in really well, where you can be dependent on the bank feeds is, is if you're on more of a cash basis system. So that's one of the things you want to consider. Where am I on more of a cash basis system and how can the bank feeds fit into that? And where do I need more of an accrual basis system if I'm a small company trying to put together the, you know, the most efficient system and, and how can I work in bank feeds into that? So let's just consider that real quick here. We'll talk about this in a lot more detail when we get to the bank feeds, but just to get an idea of what I'm talking about here, I'm going to jump over to QuickBooks desktop just to look at the flow chart. We're in zero, we're using zero accounting software, but this is the desktop of QuickBooks because they give you this little flow chart and it's a similar kind of process for any kind of accounting system. You can break out the accounting system into cycles such as the vendor cycle or accounts payable cycle, customer cycle, accounts receivable or revenue cycle, employee cycle. Now, if we were to think about, let's just think about the customer cycle here. Customer cycle, typically that's, we're gonna get money from the customer eventually. That's what we want to happen. Now, if we have a full service accrual type of system, and you can think about a law firm or a CPA firm or like a landscaping company or something that might do the work, let's say we do the work and then we count the hours it takes to do the work, then we bill the client for the work done. If that's the case, we typically have to invoice the client after the work is done. We then have a receivable that's owed to us and we expect to be paid at some future point and we need to track the invoices that are outstanding. So in that kind of a system, notice what's happening here. It's not just a cash basis system because we have to track this transaction over here that doesn't have cash involved in it. So for us to simply put in the bank feeds doesn't catch the, the receivable that we need to basically do in that type of system. And we would then have to think, well, how, is the, how are the bank feeds then that I put in these transactions that come from the bank that only are things dealing with cash? I need to tie the deposits then into basically the invoicing process somehow. And there are ways to do that, um, you know, but we just need to think about how that's going to fit into the full service account accrual accounting system. Now, if you're on a cash basis system, some other systems you might be saying, hey, well, what if I just work like an Amazon affiliate marketing and they just get me paid, Amazon just pays me, or I have books from Amazon and Audible and they just pay me, or YouTube just pays me YouTube, or I have, you know, courses on, on you know, Udemy and whatnot and other kind of platforms and they just pay me. In that and those kind of cases, then maybe you'd be okay more with, with a cash basis system because you don't have to track the receivables in that case. So maybe in that case, you just say, hey, I'm not even going to put the deposits in on my side. 
I'm simply going to wait till they clear the bank and then be completely dependent on the bank, which is a little bit unusual because usually you enter the deposits into your side and then you double check them with the bank. And that gives you that, that double check feature, which makes your books more reliable, you know, but if the bank, if you just want to rely on the bank in that situation on the cash basis, it would be faster and that might work well in that kind of situation. Cause I don't need to track accounts receivable. I can be completely on a cash basis. I'm completely dependent on the bank and I'm just taking whatever, you know, goes into the bank and, and recording it as revenue at that point in time. And, and in a kind of system where it's just cash basis, you may be able to do that. We'll discuss this more as you go into, as we talk about bank fees in general. Now, when you assign out the, 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 uh, the bank feeds, you also kind of have to drive it by the forms that are happening here. You got to assign an account to it. And oftentimes when you do that, uh, really the, the system zero will think of it as kind of forms, you know? So like these are, these are forms, these transactions are forms like a deposit form and a receive payment form or money in form as zero will call it. So we need to have an idea of what these forms are, because even though we use bank feeds, we're still going to kind of see these indications, these kind of forms as indications when we go to, to the actual financial statements. If we're on the vendor side of things, uh, a lot of small businesses, even if they're tracking accounts receivable, may be more on a cash basis with regards to vendors because they might just pay the vendors, again, electronically. You might pay your utility bill electronically and, and whatnot, and all your, all your payments might go out electronic. If that's the case, maybe you don't enter them at all in the, in the system when you pay them. Maybe you wait till they clear the bank and then those come in as as basically bank feeds that you would have and and you don't you don't record them till they clear the bank if that were the case then you can use the bank feeds then you got to go in there and just basically assign out those items uh, as a form like an expense type form or a money out form and so we need to know what a money out kind of form is and how to assign the expense accounts to do that but then you can go in there and, and assign those out those might work well however if you do have a situation where you need to enter the bills first and track the accounts payable then you have the same kind of situation with the bank feeds. You got the bill and you're going to have to somehow consider when, when you pay the bill, how you're going to connect that up to the, to the bill. Cause now you have an accrual kind of system. Also, if you deal with inventory, you're going to have an added complexity as well, because, because you're going to have the money going out with related to, to inventory and possibly bills and purchase orders that you're going to have to tie into this accounting system as well. So note, the closest you are to kind of a cash basis system, the easier you might be able to set up the, the bank feeds. You'll lose some detail by, by not doing more of a full service system. We'll talk more about that in the bank feeds section. Uh, and the more you're on an accrual basis, you could still use bank feeds. They're really helpful still, but you need to think about how they're going to fit into your you know, process and how they're going to fit into your accounting cycle, your accounting process. So we're going to learn basically the accounting process, kind of how all these forms type of work uh, in, in a full service kind of a cruel type of system doing a bank reconciliation and whatnot and then we'll think about the bank feeds and how they would fit into our system whether it being accrual and what if we were to deviate from a full service accrual system to more of a of a cash basis system and how the bank feeds can work in that kind of system as well